I do not understand what I do, but for what I want, I do die. Chesed. Chesed. Son of Shalumia. Achiez or. Pedazur. That really means something, doesn't it? All right, we're going to look at Aloy as uh, representing Jesus, a savior figure, a martyr figure, uh, and a messiah figure. Uh, all of those different different ideas seem to be coming into play in the character of Aloy, in the character of Dr. Sobek. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, like many fictional stories, seems to like playing with these kind of Jesus metaphors. Fiction writers, often uh, those fiction writers who aren't Christians, will uh, create characters that have characteristics parallel to those of Jesus. Some do it for purely literary reasons, recognizing that Jesus was a unique person uh, in history and did things that resonate with the human psyche, and so they want to uh, take advantage of that effect that, they, that it can bring to their writing. Others do it because they respect aspects of who he was and his character and what he did, um, things that he taught, even if they, you know, pick and choose and kind of ignore the things he said that, that they don't like, you know, they'll pick and choose and uphold the things that they do like, you know. Um, Jesus met metaphors can also be used to point to Jesus and lead people to faith in him, but that is rarely done outside of Christian publishing. Uh, most times parallels to Jesus seem to be only for emotional resonance, this kind of detached academic philosophizing, or possibly to suggest some claim about Jesus himself. And I wonder if all three of those uses, emotional resonance, resonance, academic philosoph philosophizing, excuse me, uh, and making some claim about the historical Jesus. I wonder if all three of those might be in play in Horizon Zero Dawn in the Jesus metaphors that are being used. Um, but without being able to read the writer's mind, I'm just going to present some moments that caught my attention and give you a few thoughts along the way. What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, Life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you, all things. No, Elizabeth, I know you too well. Somehow you will find a way. In you, all things are possible. Despite having naturalistic overtones and assumptions baked into the game, Elizabeth Sobeck and Aloy seem to parallel Christ in uh, at least a couple of ways. They are uh, champions of human life, and yet they're rejected by their peers. Uh, Dr. Sobeck dies and uh, in a sense is resurrected later in the form of Aloy, who is born uniquely from a machine rather than two biological parents. So they're taking you know, the, the, the story of Christ and putting things out of order and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and Dr. Sobek specifically dies to, uh, to save the world. Uh, Gaia also says that in Elizabeth Sobek, all things are possible. Something repeatedly said of God in Matthew 19, 26, Mark 10, 27, and Mark 14, 36, for just a few examples. Have you returned to speak with the goddess Aloy? Um, yes, I guess you could say that. We must fight a metal devil because the goddess says, or because you say. I think the goddess and I are in agreement. We're both glad you're here. Now those clips, they are interesting because Aloy shifts from being judgmental uh, toward the, the, the religious people around her to being just shy of like... I almost want to say patronizing, maybe I shouldn't go that far, but she's kind of just going along uh, with this, what the superstitious people are saying about her. Uh, and this lines up, not with the, the historical Jesus, but what I think many would like to believe about the historical Jesus, that they would like to think, uh, and they would, and many put forth this view that, you know, Jesus never thought of himself as God, and, you know, no, he wouldn't have accepted worship. That's just alterations that, like, people were really into Jesus, and they were big fans, you know, or they just got really zealous about him, and so his legend grew and stuff like that, you know. Um, but in the gospel accounts, Jesus did accept worship, and he did affirm that he was the unique son of God, and even God himself. So to reject that historical reality, you have to get around the incredibly 
superior reliability and preservation of the Gospels in comparison to numerous unquestioned historical documents. So the idea that the Gospel documents were altered as legend developed uh, for Christ, it just doesn't hold up when you examine the documents themselves. I'll try to include a link to some resources that, uh, that you can read or check out that kind of really establish the case for that view. And I have failed. And life will end. No. No, Elizabeth, I know you too well. Somehow you will find a way. In you, all things are possible. Go to the ruins of Gaia Prime. Find the control room, and within it, the master override. This will give you the power to purge Hades so long as you find a way to wield it. Do not attempt repair of the system core until Hades is eradicated. Hades must be destroyed. So here we've got the uh, uh, that, that phrase regarding Elizabeth Sobeck, in you all things are possible. And also, it's interesting here that, uh, that Aloy is trying to rescue humanity from Hades, uh, named after the Greek underworld and the god ruling it, um, while the New Testament uses the word Hades to describe a place of separation from God. Uh, which Christ came to rescue all of humanity from. So again, I think there's another parallel there. The goddess spoke to you? Uh, she did. What did she say? That uh, I was born to lift a curse, to kill a metal demon. All praise Aloy, anointed, anointed of, of the Nora! Nora. All praise Aloy, anointed of the Nora! All praise Aloy, anointed of the Nora! First you shun me, now this? I will not be worshipped! I'm not your anointed! I don't belong to you! There's a whole world beyond your borders, whole tribes of people just as good as you! And it is all in danger. It's a world worth fighting for. Not just here, everywhere. Anointed is actually what the words Christ and Messiah both mean. So again, I think that this m might be uh, an attempt to kind of imply that uh, Je this was kind of Jesus' situation too, that he was anointed, he was the Christ, he was the Messiah, but he really didn't want people's worship. Instead, he wanted maybe what? Well, maybe what Aloy wants here. She wants her worshipers to see outside their own culture, uh, which I think is the cry of many non-Christians directed at Christians, um, both fairly and uh, regarding a lack of effort toward understanding on our part. Um, of other uh, people groups and cultures and stuff, and then also unfairly directed at the exclusive truth claims of the Bible, since truth by nature is exclusive of non-truth. But anyway, that's another example there where I think uh, maybe what's being put forth here is uh, the, the writer's view of what Jesus might have been like. This is Charles Ronson. I'm logging this six hours after final deployment of Gaia Prime. This morning, an access port seal malfunctioned. Gaia Prime's port seals were designed to close with a seam of less than two millimeters. But this one closed with a 10 millimeter gap. Enough for an energy signature to bleed through. Enough for the swarm to detect this facility. Enough for Gaia to be discovered and destroyed. Enough to end the future we worked so hard to make possible. Unless the hatch servos were manually re-engaged from the outside. I'm now switching to a recording of the event. Well, I'm not going out there. Not what I signed up for. Either we sent someone out, or all of this was for nothing. It should be Liz's decision. So when is she going to get here? She said five minutes. You don't think... Oh no. Okay, everyone. I've repaired the seal. Gaia? Seal closure at 1.4 millimeters. Confirmed. Elizabeth, no. We'll find a way to bring you back in. It's not gonna happen, the swarm's too close. Really, it's all right. Gaia's complete. She'll take care of things from here on out, that's what she does. 
not like this. There's so much we... Guys, you know me, I'm... I'm no good endings at letting things end, so, um... Let's not. So... Happy trails, Liz. And... Uh, see you around. Yeah. Take care of each other, all right? Liz. I'm okay with this. Elizabeth Sobek. She gave everything for the hope of life on this planet. And we are all in her debt. So there you have it. Dr. Sobek sacrifices herself uh, to save all of humanity. And that's where I think we're kind of playing with this on an academic level, because I think uh, the kind of writer that's that's wanting to put forth, if I'm if I'm right about the, you know, about this, if they're trying to put forth the idea that, you know, Jesus wouldn't have accepted worship and he wasn't really God and stuff, then I don't think they would really believe that what Jesus did actually provides for the rescue of the entire human race. Um, so the idea that uh, that Elizabeth Sobeck here uh, is, is providing rescue, in a sense, for the entire human race, I think it would probably fit more with just kind of academically playing around with the philosophy, the, the myth of, of Jesus and what he did. Hell, Liz. I know. I know you're never going to hear this. That's not the point. You, uh, <laughs> you have to play the savior in the motor all at once this time. Great work. So here she's referred to as both savior and martyr. Um, so I mean, like with any one of these things, I could kind of just, you know, say to myself, ah, it's probably just a coincidence. But when they all start stacking up, I definitely do see some ref some references to Jesus that I'd be really surprised if they weren't intended. Look, Liz, you are a pretty stand-up gal. I'm sorry you died. If you had a home to go to, I hope you got there first. But this monument Ronson's made to you? Kinda creepy if you ask me. Rest in peace, Liz. God knows you earned it. Now this is interesting. Uh, he says this monument to Dr. Sobek is creepy. Like, oh, why are we doing that? She's, you know... As if to say, she's a person. Why are we creating this weird monument to her? She wouldn't have wanted that. That's weird. And again, I think that's what uh, many among naturalists would want to say about Jesus. He didn't want worship. The fact that we have crosses all over the place and that we're singing songs about Jesus, that's weird and creepy, and he wouldn't have wanted that, you know. Um, so I think that, you know, that that that's maybe, I don't, again, I don't know if that's the intent, but it does seem to be consistent with, uh, with that kind of intent, if that's the case. You'd hate it, Liz, but I wrote you a eulogy. I had to try to express all your children, after all Apollo has taught them, they'll think they know everything, but they have to understand what you did for them. How you loved the whole world so much, with an intensity that was Dazzling, bruising, and in the end, it killed you, or you died for it. Different perspectives. And again, maybe I'm imagining a lot of this, but here there's just this little, little bit of flavoring uh, where this character says, Dr. Sobek loved the whole world so much, which really kind of uh, reminds me of John 3.16, probably the most well-known Bible verse, even among, you know, unbelievers, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Um, so, uh, and then he also comments that saying, saying Dr. Sobek was, uh, uh, she dies for the world or she was killed by it, depending on your perspective. Uh, and I think that uh, that that could also be a reference to Jesus, where a number of people, believers in Christ, Christians, would say he died for the world. He died to save the world um, and, uh, and and was killed by it, you know. 
in the in the process. I mean, as both were happening at the same time, whereas the naturalist is going to say he was killed by the world. He didn't die for it. He was simply killed by it. Uh, so it depends on your perspective. So uh, again, this is stuff that I'm not like, you know, really convinced is the intended messaging going on in this game. But cumulatively, it all adds up, you know, uh, none of these things by themselves, you know, I, I think would uh, would warrant any kind of reason for pause necessarily. But, uh, but when you add them all together, I'm like, there seems to be something they're wanting to say involving Jesus, you know, and uh, I wish I could sit down uh, with the uh, with the writers and and get to the bottom of it.